We only worked out what that number is. Can someone tell me what the whole numbers are? I think we already have the first one. 3.92 dot dot dot. That's four okay. So that's the that's the negative case, right? And when you do the positive case, 25 12 plus 12.74 dot dot dot. Okay. Now, if we we're paying attention right at the beginning, oh. you know that one of these answers actually is not an answer, right? Because we, we labored to, point, to, to work out like what should we cut out. We said the biggest, we're staying in whole numbers, the smallest we can cut out is one, <clears throat> and the biggest square we could cut out is 10, right? 10. So in fact, there is a domain restriction on H. That kind of makes sense. You can't make an arbitrarily large rectangular prism out of an A4 piece of paper, right? So in fact, when I got to here, right here, okay, in fact, you can even kind of see it here. Do you see there's a domain restriction implied by, even without common sense, you just look at this equation, right? Remember, one, two, three, they all have to be positive, right? Because they're all lengths, okay? Well, let's just have a look at this guy. Well, H it's going to be greater than zero. I mean, you already knew that. Okay. Uh, 20 take away 2h. So actually, I'm going to do this one first. 30 take away 2h. That's also got to be positive. But when you go ahead and solve that guy, what happens? H must be larger. You go minus 2h is greater than minus 30. And then you divide by a negative number, which turns your inequality around. Right? So I've got one restriction from this guy. I've got another restriction. <clears throat> excuse me, from this guy, but I have one more. I have one more. Notice this, right? So then I say 20 take away 2h. That also has to be positive. You solve it in exactly the same way that you did before, uh, which is like this, and then you divide by a negative number. So I have three restrictions I need to keep in mind. Okay. Now, just have a look at this one for a second. right? Do you see why he is actually, in this situation, irrelevant? Do you see why he's irrelevant? He's not that picky. Right? He'll accept 12 and 13 and 14, but he won't, right? So even though this restriction is true, it doesn't end up mattering because this one is, if you like, it's more strict, right? It, it, it brings me in closer. So when I think about this one and this one and this one, my actual domain restriction is zero, is less than eight, is less than 10, okay? Yes? How do you know if the 3.92 We'll find out in a second. Okay. So let, let, all of that just to note, right? What we just did, I deliberately didn't do it first so that you would get to here and then sort of raise an eyebrow, right? Because if I did this at the get-go, number one, like why did we why did we say that? And number two, you'd see straight away without even thinking about it. Okay? But now I want to justify that's why this process should come first. It should come first. Because then you can exclude answers out of the picture rather than test them and then find out, oh, I shouldn't bother with that. Why are you not using the ages less than 15? I am using the ages less than 15, but ages less than 10 is more restrictive. Okay? So if you want to think about it this way, if I have a if I plot, if I plot all of these inequalities on a number line, right? So for example, um, I've got zero here and ten here and fifteen here. Okay, I'm gonna get this one and this one and this one, but I actually want all of them at the same time. And the only region that satisfies all three is I'm now actually gonna put this on a number line because that's the one I want, is zero to ten. Does that make sense? It's got all three overlapping. Okay, you see how what we've been doing here um, brings in so much of what you've been thinking about. It's just kind of implicit in the question. Okay, so I'm going to say, now that I've established that, but 0 is less than h is less than 10. This is meant to be a solution for h, right? Therefore, h is 3.92 dot 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 only. That's the only actual solution. Okay. Now, as been raised, I think I've been to. Uh, I found a stationary point. I don't even know if it's a turning point yet, let alone if it's a maximum, which is what I actually want. I mean, we have, we have good reasons to guess that it's a maximum, but we don't actually, we haven't proven that it is, okay? So, you have a look at the function that we've got. I have two ways to, two methods for determining the nature of a stationary point. Which would you like to choose? Double now, my two choices are, my two choices are, table of values for the first derivative, or, test the concavity with the second derivative, okay? Now, which one you choose depends on, well, is the second derivative hard? If, yeah. if it is, then just do this. If the second derivative is easy, then a table of values takes a long time. 
Now you look at this, it's a polynomial. Are polynomials hard to differentiate? They're not, there's no quotients, there's, no, there's not even a product, it'll be okay. Let's do the second derivative, okay? D squared V on DH squared, that's my second derivative, okay? I've still got that four hanging out the front, but now I just have to process this. Six H take away 50. I don't have to, but I'll take out another factor of two. So at this point, sorry, at this point, I need to find out what's happening with the concavity. So I say, when h equals 3.92, dot, 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 the second derivative is equal to what? Someone give me a couple of decimal places. Three times almost four. It's like 12-ish. It is. What, neg oh, is that right? Negative 105.92? That sounds like it's in the right ballpark. 105.92? 105.83. 95. Depends, depends on how many decimal places you I used the whole thing. Yeah, okay, so you, you didn't approximate. You still yeah. use that value. For what it's worth, remember, what do I care about here? I only it's care about the sign, sign right? Yeah. That's right? However, it is actually better. It is actually better because of errors that get introduced to store this as a variable because sometimes it will matter. Okay, this time it doesn't, but that's all I'm about. The second derivative, therefore, is positive or negative? It's negative. In other words, it's concave down. down. It's concave down. Down, what kind of max, what kind of turning point is that? <laughs> it's a maximum, right? <laughs> you already knew it was going to be a maximum, okay? But now I've shown it's a maximum, yes? But what kind of maximum is it? A maximum maximum? Okay. A local maximum. So I need to, I need to say, therefore, it's a maximum. So if you found, so if you take solid to the minimum point, would you just have no solution? Say that again. Like, let's say you actually, this was actually the minimum point. Okay, I'm so glad you asked that. Okay, so let me just finish writing. Let me see how we're going to be Okay, perfect. All right, I need a little bit more space. Now, I got asked kind of two questions there at the same time, which actually had the same answer. The first question was, what happens if it's a, um, what happens if it's a minimum? Ah, maximum. Sorry. This is what happens. This is what happens. Yes, that's exactly right. I was just... Keep writing F. There we go, okay. Lovely. It's a relative maximum. Now, do note, I've pointed out it's relative because we know what cubics look like, right? They can go lower and they can go higher, okay? So what I need to establish is that not only is it a relative maximum, but it's the actual maximum. See that? Okay, now, have a look. I have a domain restriction. I have a domain restriction. You can see for 0 and 10 what's going on here. Right? When you pop in zero, what happens to this? It becomes all zeros. It becomes all zeros, right? Now, no, I can't actually have the height being zero. So I have to use this. The limit as h approaches zero of the volume, right? It's going to be zero because this guy is going to tend towards zero. You see that? Okay. So therefore, that's not going to give me a maximum, right? In the same way, the limit as h approaches zero, sorry, h approaches ten of the volume. Well, have a look at what happens as you get to ten. This guy is going to approach zero. Do, do you see that? Uh, this guy won't, but this guy will, which in fact corresponds to this length here. See that length? It approaches zero, right? So therefore, it also is zero. So neither of those, the endpoints, are not going to give me maxima, right? In fact, I'm going to say that. Okay, they cannot possibly be maxim, uh, maximums mm -hmm. because they're, they're zero and um, this is going to give me, this is concave down. Okay. So therefore, I can say, all right, fantastic. I actually have an answer now. Therefore, h equals 3.92 dot 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 is the absolute maximum. In a sense, I could go home now because I asked, you know, which of these is the biggest? Okay, I know my numbers are a bit simplified, but I guess it would be the, what is this? This is one, right? This is two, this is three. That must make this one four. Yeah? Four? Minsu, did you do four? Yeah, no? no or was it someone else's? Who did this one? Oh, yeah, eight, that's right. Oh, there were a few fours in there, okay? And you can kind of almost like, yeah, I think it works, okay? 
what is the actual volume? The actual volume, and this might be the question. The question might be, find the maximum volume of the rectangular prism you get. You would say, take this number, and you'd say the maximum volume is. No, the brown lost. <laughs> I'm actually going to have to substitute this in, right? I'm, I'm going to have to go 20 minus 2 times this number, which is like, what is it? 7.84 something. Dot, dot, dot. Um, times 30 take away 7.84. Dot, dot, dot. Times, oops, 3.92. Dot, dot, dot. Okay? And um, just for the sake of it, just for the sake of completeness, can someone give me a number? Maybe a couple of decimal points would be enough. 1056.3. And we're dealing in centimeters cubed, okay? Which is like, oh, it's about a one liter milk carton. 